Hello, YouTubes. Welcome back to James Recommends. This week, we're going to be talking about Sunless Sea. Some of you may remember years back on a game that you might not have tried, I recommended Echo Bazaar or Fall in London. This is a game by the same people. It's got that same gothic horror, Victorian, steampunk, Cthulhu feel to it. But rather than being your time-based Facebook feeling game, it's a standard single-player experience, top-down, gigantic open world. This is a game that I can't recommend the writing enough, right? The feel of the world is incredible. It's got this deep mythos that you want to continue to explore. There's an unbelievable number of hours of gameplay here. I, I honestly think this could be the only game I play all year, and it would certainly suck up all my free time. Uh, there's such depth to what you can actually explore and do within this world. So that's what's great about it, and I really want to wholeheartedly recommend this game because it's got such incredible writing, and I love the world building, and uh, I'm a sucker for games about, uh, about Cthulhu and about ships. So it's got, it's got most of the things I want, right? You put together a crew, you go and trade and explore, but for me, uh, the one major downfall of the game is that it doesn't have a fast travel system, which I understand. There are things they want you to encounter in the sea, they want this to be about exploration, they want to force you to go from uh, a point you have explored to points you haven't explored. But the problem is that there are a lot of sort of FedEx quests as you get further and further into the game, and you'll find that to unlock all the new secret hidden things, because this game is all about exploring all those hidden tiny uh, secret opportunities or those things that were locked from you that you can with great diligence make available. Uh, but to do so, you'll find yourself just trekking your ship back and forth and back and forth a great deal between islands you've already explored. And it's to the point where I was tabbing out, right? I would set my ship in general direction, tab out, occasionally this would get me killed, and I'm playing on the mode that they recommend, which is the one autosave, autosaves for you all the time sort of mode, so, you know. Um, but even despite that penalty, it was, it was enough for me that by giving all these FedEx quests and then not giving any fast travel option, not giving significant boosts to speed of your main character, even when you get new engines, all these sort of things, um, it, it, it dragged down the experience a great deal for me. Despite that, I put in a huge amount of time into it because I do. I love this world. I love the setting. There's enough mystery here that I want to continue to explore. There's enough sort of mechanical challenge within the game. I want to know how I can unlock that, that next little secret, that next little riddle. Um, but just know getting into it that without that fast travel option, without any way to speed up, you're going to spend a lot of time. I mean, I'm probably up to like 60% of the time I spend in the game is just trekking from point A to point B and back again, delivering things. So if you can put up with that and you like a rich world, you like incredibly well-written narrative, you like a, uh, a setting that's totally unique, right? London has fallen into a sea underground. Uh, you like a setting that is Victorian and gothic and steampunk. This game has a lot, lot going for it. I just have that one major caveat, but with that aside, this week, James recommends Sunless Sea. See you all next week.